Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unscripted with uh, Denise Iwana Francisco and Sandy Herrick. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Dana. How are you? I'm what great. great. I was going to say, what a great day to start a new show. <laughs> I'm very excited about starting our new show together and really back to our roots, back to our beginning. It's true. That gives me the shivers. It's it's full circle. It really is. And I'd like to give everybody out there a great big good morning. Hello from here in the Enchanted Forest, as I call my uh, many acres here in Michigan. Those of you that are tuning in via Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, all of those wonderful places, the SoundCloud uh, hosting Sandy and I, it's great to have you with us. Sandy, what would you like to say? Well, I'd like to say good morning from the enchantment of unicorn fields over here in New Hampshire, and um, welcome you all energetically to our little petting farm with all our exotic animals, our rescues, and the environment still of snow, but hey, spring's in a few days, and it's days and there's hope. <laughs> <laughs> and you're off to California today. I am. I am. I'm out to rainy California. They need it and it'll be good, but it's going to be one of those things where people that I am with make me a happy girl. Oh, so fantastic. So Sandy, this morning you and I were talking about, hey, what do we want to talk about on our first show, our maiden voyage with Unscripted? And we decided that we wanted to talk about starting fresh and, and new beginnings and I'm hoping maybe you will lead us on a little bit of a centering to bring us to a place of really thinking about new beginnings. Absolutely. And it's my honor to um, really sit with you in this continuation of energy that manifests an opportunity for people to find us and for us to be found. So thank you for that devotion and that work. And I appreciate the um, delicacy of how energy moves and collects and allows love and insight and inspiration to continue. So everybody take a deep breath. Close your eyes if you would like. And know that we are completely aligned with change, with new, with next. We sit in that suspended animation, that pause, waiting for it, hoping for it, praying for it, as whatever is completing is finding its way, offering resolution, conclusion, bringing love to that which is to find its gentle passing, to align with that which is its invitation, our invitation, into the new horizon, the next episode. Know that this is a monumental promise to all of us that change next always does come within time. Take a deep breath. And allow the time of the new beginnings to be with all of us. Open your eyes when you're ready. And allow yourself to flow within the energy and the beauty of being initiated into that which is the new and new beginnings. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sandy. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Fresh beginnings, new beginnings. How do how do you know, Sandy? How can you feel that, uh-oh, <laughs> something's waiting to shake loose and something else is ready to glom on? What is that like for you? Well, it depends on the um, issue at hand or the karma that I'm working through or the dynamic that is surrounding me. So I want everybody to be able to know that it's not always the same feeling, but there's that energy of the, oh my God, either stagnation has been so long endured or that you can feel a glimmer of light to all of a sudden have that intuition of the angle has turned, the 
vibration is about to complete and therefore get ready because the tide is moving. And the way I feel it, I think the best is to know that there's a sense of relief that's just kind of threaded with maybe some grief for what is completing and then the joy of, oh my God, there is new. And not everybody runs to the new with open arms because it's been a very emotional completion. What I do always, always, no matter how I greet it, is to welcome the fact that I have endured. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And whatever it is that I'm going through, I've made it. I've come through it. And that then in the new, there's always the reality of what is healing, what is being brought in that's different, and the possibility of knowing that you have the right to continue with a new vibration. How about you? Well, all of that, all of that. And just sometimes for me, it's a gut feeling that things are coming to a conclusion. And sometimes it comes to me in a dream. Sometimes it comes to me uh, in meditation when I'm quiet, out walking in the forest. I can sense almost a feeling of mourning, Yes. Of of um, that there's going to be a death to something. Yes. And for myself, when I have those feelings or I have a dream like that, oftentimes I will stop and be with it. Mm-hmm. What is this feeling? What is this sense of uh, of mourning, of death? And when it becomes more apparent to me that, yes, you know, there is a dying and a decaying that is going on. Uh, I typically find myself in prayer Mm. to help me move through it with grace, with dignity. Uh, Some people say, you know, top shelf or taking the high road, whatever that is, but to move through it with grace and dignity so that the healing or whatever it is that needs to be shed and left behind can be done so in a good way. Yes, yes. That is beautifully said. And there's that elegance, and it really is an elegance, where when that gut instinct, and, you know, I want to be really specific in that 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 intuition that you're talking about, that gut, that the dream. There have been many times I've had dreams, and the visions have been, get ready, Sandy. And it, you're, you're so good at pointing out, take the time, take the opportunity to engage with it, rather than to fear it and hide from it. Because these new beginnings and these changes are part of our personal development. It's part of the way that we experience and express who we are and who we are not. Because not everybody wants to have change. But it's just like the seasons. They come. Mm -hmm. And we get to say, well, I like this. I love this. I don't like this. And it gives us that right to truly experience who we are and find our own identity. And that grace you talk about is that wonder of, you know, I can fight it and not like it, but it's still happening. So yes, prayer, meditation, conversation, to find an ally, Mm -hmm. truly an ally within the universe or a companionship to, to hold our hand as we're going through something even though we may feel very much alone. Well, exactly. And, you know, for myself, maybe it's because of my Scorpio nature, but I am somebody who typically tries to work through things on my own and try to get the pieces together and pull the pieces apart and all of those kind of things on my own until ultimately I realize that there might be some pieces I can't put back into the puzzle or I don't even know what puzzle I'm putting together. Right. And, and and that's when I always seek help or assistance, an ally, as you say. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you know, this past week I was out in South Dakota, out on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation visiting with my relatives, and there had been something that was sitting quite heavily, actually, on my heart for some time now. Mm-hmm. And for me, I sought counsel with my very dear friend and my mentor, Chief Arvo Looking Horse, mm-hmm. to get clarity, to to have perspective, and uh, to be able to help us see 
things that maybe we're not ready to see or we're not able to see, or frankly, we're, we get so caught up in the uh, what's happening right now that we can't see the forest for the trees. So, right. you know, sitting with him and telling him, you know, what was on my mind, what was on my heart and having him illuminate, right. illuminate. When you find yourself needing some time uh, with somebody to help illuminate, what do you do, Sand? <clears throat> Well, um, in that illumination, I just want to put a niche of a continuation because in the illumination, it's an elimination. Yes. It's an elimination of the fear or the concern or the tether that gives that snippet of, ah, I, I'm, I'm so stretched, I couldn't cut the string to the balloon <laughs> or the weight that was holding me down. And there's that beauty of when there's illumination, you can see through eyes that see you. Not We don't only see ourselves from the interior. We do need that objective outside view and that, that beckoning to continue even out of our own demise or dilemma. And... There's also the grace of being honored with, to put it very delicately, our humanness of getting ourselves into situations that bring delusional feelings to our own self-dignity, our disrespect of self or our embarrassment or how did I not know this or how did I <laughs> couldn't figure this, how come I couldn't <laughs> see this? You know, mm -hmm. like you say, the forest of the trees. We aren't, we aren't able to see everything. And the one thing that I love from way back when, when I was told something about this, is that if I'm walking on the road, I can see whatever it is that the, hot, the horizon presents. If I'm in a forest, yeah, in, I'm going to see the next tree. If I'm in the desert, I'll see a horizon or a mountain. If I'm at the ocean, I'll see the ocean. But if I want to have an elevated view, to get in an airplane or to walk to higher ground mm -hmm. or to, you know, to know that there are many ways to see a situation. Mm -hmm. And when we're stuck and ruminate or, and I, and I say this again with the integrity of learning, we aren't supposed to always find out right away. And when we don't find out right away, it gives us that support of exactly what you said, Dana. We self-explore. We get all the information that we can. And then, and then we bring what we have to somebody who can look at the puzzle better than us. Mm -hmm. Explain it with a wisdom that we yet have not achieved. But then that wisdom offered to you, to me, to anyone, or the wisdom we give is part of the medicine of the toolbox that allows everybody to go on and go, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I now have that piece. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the piece of the puzzle. It's the peace of mind. Yes. So, Sandy, when you, for yourself, when you discover, oh, that's, that's where I'm headed. That's what's on the horizon. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, now I understand where I'm being led. What is next for you in the process of beginning fresh or, or continuing on? God, that's a great question. And again, um, if I come down to the basic core in me, it's to sit there and have the clarity that spirit has always caught me. Always. That there has always been something there that is waiting for me or present for me to interact with. And then it's my responsibility to take the step to start the dance and to be available for it. That it can come and offer me like a vision that we both had just recently. A yes. hand is, ex is extended on the belt. Shall we go for anybody who doesn't know when I really work with spirit, I belt. I'm going to be polite. Um, there's that beauty of knowing that when that hand is extended, sometimes those gifts or those visions or those opportunities are given to us and we're not out of our own fatigue yet of needing to rest from the difference. But when the time to get up is there, I literally feel that I have been 
energetically calibrated Mm -hmm. to align with where I am next. One of the great things dear, dear friend of mine said, because I've traveled around the world, I've moved over 50 some odd places in throughout the States and in Europe, is that to go and be someplace to know I don't know the, 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 my body doesn't know the land yet. So I don't know, my sight doesn't know the peripheral. My sight doesn't know how many steps it is down this particular room to get to that room or what right or left is going to get me to the next place to find the shopping. Navigating our new area, we are allowed time to navigate and to not take it personal when I feel embarrassed that I don't know where I am. Or feel to learn where I am, to explore, to discover. And then I develop a confidence. I love the dogs are excited about something. Yeah, they are. <laughs> How do you navigate next? The new beginning. And, and, and first of all, I'm relieved that it's available. Right. Truly, oh my God, there it is. Right. Well, for me, um, for me, typically what happens next is the next part of the prayer. And where do I take the prayer next? And I think for myself, because I think I do most just about everything based on a prayer. Um, I do feel that leading myself next with prayer is always the best way to go. And for myself, you know that I'm getting ready to do a vision quest or a homblecha. And um, so preparing for that so that I enter, not only do I leave what was in a graceful way, but I'm able to move into what's next in a graceful way. Does that, does that make sense, Sandy? It's a beautiful way. Absolutely. And, you know, I pray differently than you do in that ancientness of your prayer. I pray either in a meditation, I wait and feel my feelings, and then I pray. I always, you know, I'm born into Catholicism, so I will tell everybody, my bones are Catholic, and yet my spirit is a universal quiver. And when I pray, it's always from my bones. (laughs) I like that. And that is a bona fide truth. When I feel and meditate or wait for the vibration to quiver through me like the stone in the pond, then I feel the ripple come through me and I move with that ripple. But it's amazing how when my bones really are weary, the prayer is always very simple. And you know the uh, the I'm a child of God prayer that I say, or I talk directly to my spirits, God, whatever the force is, I feel is closest to me. Walking sometimes brings me to prayer that I could even cry about because it just says, just keep moving. Know that you're able to move. And if I'm able to move, I'm able to meet change. And yet, I have been in a bed where, you know, I've had many, many episodes where depression got me so deeply involved with that change. Spirit came to the bed and actually said, it's time to get up. You've grown. I like that. And the change was, they proved it to me. They (laughs) proved it to me. So, yes. Sometimes we do just want to be in the bed and to stay in the bed and, you know, cover our head up. And there does come the time when spirit says it's time to get out of bed. It's time to, you know, get your get your slippers on and at least shuffle down and get a fresh cup of coffee <laughs> because there's something next waiting for you. Exactly. And exactly. Yeah. So, you know, for me. Yesterday, just after you and I did uh, our, your mor- morning show on Be Live Thank TV, you. yeah, I was in conversation with uh, Ivan Looking Horse, who will be putting me up on the hill this summer uh, to pray about all you know the things that are new and moving into that space and talking to him about 
the fact that I know there is new, I know that there is a next chapter, I know that there's work to be done, and that I'm a conduit or a tool for that work. And in that, he and I were talking about why it is that for me, when I'm walking into new, that prayer uh, in that way is so important to me. For myself, when I'm walking into new, I know that I'm walking with spirit. Yes. And I know that I am being guided by my guides in spirit, uh, whether they are animal allies, whatever they happen to be. Uh, Wakantanka, the Tankashilas, all of them are, are guiding me and to have quiet conversation in, you know, so it happens to be at the top of a hill um, on a hochoka or altar uh, by myself with just the spirits of nature for one day, two day, three day, four days, whatever that is in the complete silence of me and spirit to have clarity. Uh, so for me, it's really important to be able to find a place of solitude sometimes. Do you ever need solitude, Sand? Oh, my God. Um, I was born liking solitude. And that's one of those things when my mother told me way back when, when I was a child, that I was the only one of seven kids that could really self-entertain and be quiet. Mm -hmm. And she would holler at me once in a while, get outside, go outside. It's like, but there was a place where I would be quiet outside, but there was also a place where I could be quiet inside. Uh -huh. And I, I don't mind being quiet. I don't mind. I don't like feeling lonely, which is different than feeling quiet. Right. And if I'm in that aloneness, in that quiet, then I need to reconnect with that spiritual group so that it guides me to where the next voice that will interact with me through human connection is a, is a new friend or familiar. I mean, that's how you and I connected way back when, when we heard our voices over the radio and we saw a couple of pictures of each other. Was like, Wait a second, there's somebody right there. Uh -huh. and, and it's nice to know that I'm not finished making new friends, and I'm certainly not going to leave the ones that are in my history that have walked this journey with me. Right. At such a level of integrity that they're the markers of my life. I may not see them for years or maybe even ever again. But if I do see them, the marker of the landmark, the the post in the road that says this is important for us to share. It's like the do -si do through life. I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to be with you until it's time for you to release it. Go on to the next. Uh-huh. Exactly. And I believe in my soul, Dana, that the hand that came through the vapor to me and then to you, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't even know it was happening until we mentioned it. It's there's the do si do. Mm -hmm. Walking so with spirit. To, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And we have both waited. Yes. We yes. have both waited. We have both waited. And both needed to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So that's the other side. You know, you just don't sit there and go, I want. It's. What am I available to do and how do I do it? Exactly. How can I serve? Yes. Not just, you better give it to me or I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you better give it to me the way that I want to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and could you make it really comfortable, by the way? Because endings and beginnings, I just want them to be cozy and comfortable. No yeah. pain, no irritation, no anxiety, no trepidation. Just make it really easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, and for me, that's where the prayer comes in, whether it's just uh, being in prayer outside or uh, in ceremony and pipe ceremony or humblecha, vision quest, whatever it happens to be, is help me to see the higher perspective. Help me to see what's really going on bigger. <laughs> In the bigger picture, like, you know, we yeah. say the, the eagle. Um, right. And I think that for me, once I'm able to get to see things from a higher perspective, uh, that for me is grace, is when I'm able to see from that perspective. And sometimes we need help getting to that higher perspective. For some people, um, it's ceremony, it's prayer, it's meditation, yoga, whatever it happens to be. For other people, it's rabbi, minister, um, holy person, uh, medicine person. Sometimes it's a therapist. 
that helps us to see from the higher perspective. And I think it's it's important to have people here on the earth plane, on the physical plane that can help us with those things. Absolutely. And I also involved that that you know, that global energy of the bubble of yes, a higher and a deeper. In the work that I do, it's that it's that depth. Let's go into the depth of who you are. Because if you're always just flat, you don't you know, you may not see down into the deep waters, the mysteries. And when you go up high, you get a broader view of something. I mean that's the whole thing. You, you okay, you go to the top of the mountain and you can see something. But when you get into an airplane, when you fly the bird, you see for miles and miles and miles. And for me, the beauty of going into the depth, that's for to do your personal work. Yes. To be able to know that there is always work to do in developing your humanness, gracing yourself with the wisdom of exploring yourself. We have girth. We have width. If we're going to talk about vibration, it literally is like a tuning fork. You strike it, and the, the vibration carries out and comes through us. And so our heartbeat, even my heartbeat knows that when I feel a quickening or my heart sinks. You know, you talk about that pit of your stomach. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Good God, that is the worst feeling. And then when your heart sinks, we're going into the depth of something that we need to traverse. Mm -hmm. And there's a truth to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the comfort of having someone to talk to, having prayer, having instinct that this too shall pass, reading words of inspiration so that you can just even get the serotonin back into the snaps of your brain. Yes. And, you know, to be able to find a way to energize that that place of yourself that is willing, willing to participate with the next. Yes. Because we do need to have that will. Mm-hmm. And when someone's will is saying, you know, I'm not going to meet this season, then that needs to be honored also. Yeah. How do you honor the passing of a season, Sandy? For me, uh, recently in the passing of a season, I actually do ceremony. Uh, For myself, I do a pipe ceremony, a chinupa ceremony, um, to put something to rest, almost like a burial, um, to let something, let it be, let it go. How do you wrap up? the passing of a season or a situation or a time in your life? It's interesting that you ask that question of me because I celebrate it with the light. And I didn't know I did this until I started mowing my lawn. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It was, you know, I'm out here on that little mower until the sun is gone, but until the light shifts. I'm out in it. And I say my prayer or I talk to spirit at that place that I'm out here in the light. Even with what's happening right now, here comes spring, the celebration of the equinox. I can feel the light is giving me a a wider invitation to start coming outside again. I'm not a winter sports person, but boy, I celebrate the dirt. I start putting my pots together and I start finding plants to put out. You've been here and know that, you know, if if you're going to come to the backyard, you're going to know that there's manure around. I get out and start digging. (laughs) And in that, there's that beauty of knowing I scrape the ground of all the debris from our animals. I talk to the earth and I talk to the sky and it's not something that is, it's like, it's like, I'm not a shaman. I'm certainly not somebody that is an earth being. I'm a human being that appreciates the earth. I like that. And so my physicality gets involved Mm -hmm. and I can feel the excitement of it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be lighter, 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 lighter. And then as soon as that angle turns, it's like, oh, I need to start getting ready to go into the cave again and to quiet something down. So my body celebrates the rhythm. My body celebrates the opportunity to grow 
things, watch things bloom, and to attend to it. And I feel exactly the same way with clients. I feel exactly the same way with the human spirit, you know, to shift the dirt that needed to be um, recultivated, um, to open up and let the air get into the soil, to go into that dark place and know there's seeds. I, I was just down in Connecticut, and the, the plants are coming up. And I went, oh, <laughs> and I passed a, I literally passed the uh, lilac tree that looks as good as a dirt nail. And I thought, oh my God, in like seven weeks, you're going to be full of, good. oh my. So th- that's how I celebrate. I see the future by knowing the tree is promised it will bloom. I like that. And I think that's a perfect way to end our first show. Oh my no, gosh. Yeah. And uh, so I'd like to thank everybody that has tuned in this morning to me and Sandy and Gabriel James, my Jack Russell Terrier, (laughs) who clearly had a lot to say for our first show. (laughs) He gets chatty like that sometimes. And you know what? There will be times when all of you will probably hear Alexander out at Unicorn Field. This is true. The peacocks are in the backyard. So just so you know, you know, unscripted with me and Sandy is just that. It's unscripted. There are animals in the house and animals outdoors in the enchanted forest. And uh, we keep it real, keep it live. And uh, we're happy to be here. Sandy, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for this oh, new beginning. For me. Yes. Okay, everybody, let's start anew together. Here we go. All right. Shine on, Bye. everybody. <laughs>